Today we're going to solve a system of equations using our graphing calculator and I'm going to walk you through the steps that you will take when solving a system of equations using your calculator and this is going to be TI 83 or 84 calculator. This does not walk through steps for a TI Inspire. So the first thing that you want to do is solve for y. You want to convert your equation to slope intercept form so you want to solve for y. So how do I get y all by itself in this first equation right here? And I'm actually going to write it out so that you can really see what I need to do. To get y all by itself, I need to subtract 2 from both sides. And I get y equals our x and negative 2 like terms. No, they're not, so I can't combine them. So I get x minus 2. So that's my first equation. In the second equation, how do I get y all by itself? I'm going to subtract x from both sides. That eliminates it from the left, and I'm left with y equals negative x plus 4. So now, that's your second equation. Grab your graphing, graphing calculator, and we're going to graph it and find the point of intersection. Once we solve for y in each of our equations, we're going to plug in those equations into y equals into our calculator. So as you can see my screen, I've just cleared my RAM. You'll just go to second plus seven one two, and that will clear your calculator. Everything that you have on your calculator, it'll be reset, totally cleared. Um, I like to have my students do that often. So we're gonna go to y equals. That's this button in the upper left corner up here y equals, it's that gray button, and we're going to plug in each of these equations. So the first one is y equals x minus 2. So the x button is right here next to the green alpha button. x minus, that's the gray button, minus 2. And we're going to plug that into y1. And then we're going to plug in our second equation into y2. So negative x plus 4. Just be very careful. You don't want to put a minus sign right here. It's negative x negative, then your variable x plus 4. So now that we've got these two equations into y equals, let's graph it and see what it looks like. So there's my first equation, it will graph first, and then it'll graph my second equation next, and you can see that point of intersection. So what we want to tell our calculator to do is to calculate that point of intersection, and here's the steps that you're going to need to follow you're going to go to second trace. Anytime you're in your graph, y equals, and you need one of these second functions up here that's in blue, you have to press the second button first. So second trace, and that goes to calculate. So what do we want to calculate? We want to calculate the point of intersection. So you can scroll down to number five and then press enter, or you can just press the button five and it'll automatically go to that. So intersection. So Whenever you find the point of intersection, you don't need to do anything special. You just need to press enter three times. So it says first curve, enter, second curve, enter, guess, enter. So you're just going to press enter three times. And then voila, there's your point of intersection. Your x value is three and your y value is one. So that's what you would write as your ordered pair for the solution for this particular problem. Let's take a look at our second example. The second example will require a few more steps in order to get y all by itself. So I'm going to, in my first equation up here, 4y minus 2x equals 4. Notice that it's not in standard form. The y variable with the coefficient is actually first. So I need to get that y all by itself. What do I do first? I'm gonna add 2x to both sides. And I'm left with 4y equals 2x plus 4. What do I do to get y all by itself? I divide everything by 4. So I divide this side by 4 and everything on the right side by 4. Because what you do to the left, you have to do to the right. You have to keep your equation balanced. So y equals, now every single term gets divided by 4. So this first one, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half x, and then the second one, 4 divided by 4, is 1. So that's what my first equation will look like in slope-intercept form. Let's take a look at the second equation. The second equation, what do I need to do? I need to subtract 10x from both sides. 
and I'm left with negative 5y equals negative 10x plus 10. What do I need to do now? Divide everything by negative 5, and I'm left with y equals negative 10 divided by negative 5 is positive 2. x, 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. So y equals 2x minus 2, that's the equation, or, or your second equation in slope-intercept form. So now grab your graphing calculator and we're going to graph this and find the point of intersection. Let's reset my calculator again for problem number two and let's enter in these equations into y equals. So the first thing we're going to do is go to y equals. And we're going to plug in these equations again. We've got 1 half x plus 2. So if you have a TI 84, one of the things you can do is go to alpha y equals and you can plug in your fractions just like this, 1 over 2. So 1 over 2, arrow out, and then you can press x plus 1. If you have a TI-83, you'll just want to put your fractions in parentheses. Open parentheses, 1 divided by 2, close parentheses. And now let's go into y2, and we're going to enter in our second equation into y2, and that's 2x minus 2. So 2, variable x, minus 2. So you want to enter in both equations into y equals your first equation in y1, second equation in y2, and then we're going to graph it. So go to graph, and it'll graph your first equation first. Mine is obviously moving very slow, and it's in color. The first graph is, or first line is in blue, second line is in red, and I can visually see the point of intersection. So now we want to tell our calculator to calculate the point of intersection. So I'm going to go to second trace, that's calc, calculate, and what do we want it to calculate? Point of intersection, so we're going to go to 5, again you can just press the number 5, and boom it'll get there. And then just press enter three times, enter, enter, enter. And then boom, there's your point of intersection, 2, 2, x values 2, y values 2. So that's what you would write as your ordered pair. Let's take a look at our third and final example. So what's our first step? We need to solve for y. So I'm going to rewrite this, 12x plus 4y equals negative 4. And some of you might be faster at solving for y, but I like to write every single step in Algebra 1. So I need to subtract the entire x term, minus 12x. So I'm left with 4y equals negative 12x minus 4. What do I do now? Divide everything by 4. Every single term gets divided by 4. So negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3x. Negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. So this is my first equation in slope-intercept form. Let's look at the second equation. So one of the things that I like to do in Algebra 1 is if there's nothing in front of a variable, what can you always put there? A 1. You don't have to but that one can go there. So I need to subtract this x term from both sides. I'm left with negative 1y equals negative 2x plus 6. That negative, when I put that 1 there, it reminds me that I don't want what negative y equals. I want what y equals. So I need to divide everything by negative 1, and I get y equals 2x minus 6, and this is the second equation that you'll plug in to y equals. So grab your graph and calculator, and let's plug this one in and find the point of intersection. My calculator again for the final problem. After we've solved for y, we want to we wanna plug in these equations into y equals. So I'm going to go into y equals, and I'm going to plug in the first equation, negative 3x minus 1. So be careful, that negative is down there. Negative 3x, then your minus sign, minus 1. A lot of students, if you have an error message come up, a lot of times that's what I see is instead of negative 3, you'll have typed in minus 3. So make sure that you've done that correctly. So negative 3x minus 1, and then 2x 
minus 6. So plug in your equations into y1 and y2, and then where do we go next? We're going to graph it. So let's see. And there it goes. That's our first equation, negative 3x minus 1. And our second equation, there it goes, 2x minus 6. So I can visually see that point of intersection. Now I want to tell my calculator to calculate it. Second trace, that's calc. Anything we're dealing with where we're telling our calculator to calculate something in our graph, we're going to go there. And we're going to find the point of intersection, that's number 5. And then I just press enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. Did I do it? Enter again. There we go. There's my point of intersection, 1, negative 4. So a lot of times, what's the y value of the solution? It's negative 4. What's the x value of the solution? It's positive 1. So now I do want to show you something. If you go to your table of values, so how do you go to your table? Second graph. So second graph. If you go to your table of values, and you look at when x is 1, what do you notice about when x is 1? y is negative 4 in the first equation, y is negative 4 in the second equation. That's how you can tell from your table of values where your point of intersection is. Because your point of intersection, that's the point that they share. That's the point where they have the, each of those equations has the same x value as it does the y value. So in my first equation has the point 1, negative 4. The second equation also contains the point 1, negative 4. Therefore, that's the point they share. That's the point of intersection. So that concludes your notes and examples over solving a system of equations by graphing using the TI-83 or 84 calculator. I hope it was helpful.